what are some of the bullet points that we're going to go through? Uh, we'll look at constructive trusts, where a property is transferred to one party, but both live there. That was the case of the Fatal brothers. The SDLT 3% surcharge implications on the purchase of a granny flat or annex. Conflict of interest in the context of joint buyers, duties of disclosure and separate representation. The SRA Code 2019, Law Society Guide to Conflict and Conveyancing. Look at gifted deposits and inheritance tax implications. Wills and interfamily disputes, what happens with other offspring, claims by a surviving occupier where there is no will. And comorientes, that means who died first, where there's no actual clue in reality. Difficulties with joint ownership, declarations of trust, and problem cases, including applications for rectification and severance of the joint tenancy. Practical difficulties regarding ageing and social care. A look at the Law Society guides to moving in together, mortgage problems, other occupiers sharing possession, and mortgage covenants and equity release. Fraud. Is the person in front of you really the spouse or parent? A fraudster moving in, the Dillon case in Barclays Bank. And towards the end, time permitting, prenuptial agreements, a brief look at that, cohabitation agreements, and when they're needed and what might go wrong. In a moving in scenario, often parents are helping adult children to buy. So the, the parents may simply move into their children's property with no further formality. They may seek to assist without immediately moving uh, either. But in either case, there are several points to consider. They can, they can have a guarantor mortgage, which uh, allow borrowers to take on a bigger mortgage than the lender would normally make. If a close family member is prepared to stand as guarantor, so parents who own their own home can offer them as additional security, collaterally, uh, on the offspring's mortgage. They must have enough equity in their home. And, of course, difficulties arise if and when the children fail to pay because the guarantee can then be called in. Another variation can be family offset mortgages. Their parents place their savings into an account with the lender back linked to the child's mortgage. The children cannot access those funds. The parents haven't given the money away, but it is locked away for some years until the mortgage comes down uh, to a level that the lender assesses renders the deposit account no longer required as security. 